doing a phone review of the brand new and innovative iPhone 14 Pro. So, before we begin the video, as always, when I'm reviewing these products, I will be following the structure, which means I'll be just talking about and reviewing these products in this eight step structure. And that structure is always and will always be, guys, one, the design of the product, two, the display of the product, three, performance, four, battery, five, camera, six, the purpose of using it, seven, price and the current value, and last but not least, eight, my valid opinion on if you guys should pick this product up. Um, so guys, we have a lot to talk about, especially with this newer iPhone that just dropped. Um, so, um, you know, if you guys are new to the channel, again, be sure to hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to the channel. It, it helps me bring out more videos just like this one for you guys to watch and to learn about the product. Um, you know, hit the like button if you like the video, leave a comment, drop a comment, you know, feedback is always great to have, you know, even negative ones. Um, so other than that, guys, let's begin the video. So just like the iPhone 13 Pro and 12 Pro, these three, those two phones share a similar design as the iPhone 14. It's no different as by holding this phone or even by getting a similar color to the previous two models listed. They look pretty much the same. You know, if I was to go outside, if I, if I had gotten this iPhone in a gold, in a gold colorway, and I go outside, use it, Apple Pay, call, you know, just using it in general, everybody would just think that it's either an iPhone 12 Pro or an iPhone 13 Pro, as there's no really difference in design change to the outer of the casing. Um, only major design change is the display, which I'll get to that in the next segment. Um, so other than that, we still, we still got a square front. Um, you know, from the iPhone 13, the 14 features a, the earpiece is now to the top of the bezel of the phone. It's no longer in the middle of the screen as compared to the previous iPhone 12 where the earpiece was in the middle of the screen with the notch. It is now, the earpiece is now up here close to the bezel of the stainless steel band. Um, other than that, going to the side, you got your same surgical grade stainless steel. It's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit more thicker compared to the 12 Pro. I'm not too sure on the 13 Pro because I never had a 13 Pro, but it, it is a little bit more thicker than the 12. Um, also, you can still you can still see it still gets fingerprints all over it. This thing, um, you know, it's fingerprint city all around the stainless steel band. Um, and then you got your signature mute switch from Apple. You got your volume rockers. Now, what, what do you guys notice? That's what's missing from this iPhone 14. The SIM card tray. The SIM card tray is completely gone. They removed the SIM card tray for US iPhone 14 models. If you do get the iPhone 14 Pro or even 14 series in another country, you will still get that, that SIM card tray. But if you buy iPhone 14 series in the US, you're not getting a SIM card tray. Um, Apple is going strictly on eSlim, which is which is more secure and more easy to transfer numbers and stuff like that. Um, I find it really easy and more secure, as you know, if someone steals your phone, they can they cannot use the phone, the SIM because they cannot remove the SIM card. The phone, it's eSIM. It's it's strictly integrated into the device. Um, security enclave so you cannot remove the sim card or anything like that so boom um now the little downside to that is if you do buy a us iphone and you decide to travel to the caribbean um let's say for me trinidad or haiti you know i won't be able to swap out or use the sim card in those countries because they do not have the sim card trade um, and i'm pretty sure they 
the Caribbean didn't adapt to eSIM as yet. Um, so that's a little bummer, but hey, that's iPhone to you. We will see Samsung doing it in a few years, as you know, if Apple does something and people are satisfied with it, the other carriers, other phone company does the same thing. Like for Apple removed the, the headphone jack, Samsung did it. When they removed the, the charging brick, Samsung did it. So it's, it's, just, it's a pattern. They, Apple does it first, other phone companies sees how it goes and then they follow. Anyways, other side of the stainless steel, surgical gray, you got your power button and the 5G antenna. I'm not sure if you guys know, but on the iPhone 14, it's a bit longer. If you do, if you have the iPhone 13 Pro model, I'm not sure if this was actually the same sizes, but comparing this to the iPhone 12 Pro, this is a little bit longer. The 14 Pro 5G antenna is a bit longer. You know, back here, we got our speaker, we got our mic with lightning port. Fortunately, this lightning port is still here on the 14 series. Um, it may go away with the iPhone 15. Um, you know, I'm not, look, I don't, I don't have a problem using the lightning port. The only thing that I have a problem with it is Apple is still using USB 2.0 standards for this lightning port connector. Um, you know, Apple has a new format with Apple Pro Raw, which uses um, 75 megabytes of data for each picture that you take and transferring that to a computer with USB 2.0 speeds is not really it in 2022. It's gonna take a while, especially if you have multiple photos of that format. So Apple really needs to get their act together and either put USB-C on the next iPhone or just do what they did with the iPad Pro. They in incorporated USB 3.0 in the, the lightning connector, right? They, don't they do the same with the iPhone? Anyways, top, you got your another antenna, purple, the back. Again, very similar to the iPhone 12 and 13 Pro. You have your matte finish, texturized glass, Apple logo in the middle and the camera boom. The camera boom on the iPhone 14 series are huge, really, really huge. Um, you know, 13 Pro cases will not fit the 14 as the camera bump is really big and those lenses are protruding a lot. Um, if you were to lay this flat, you are going to get this lens scratch. Apple advertises that these are sapphire crystal lens covers. Um, but if you do watch a YouTube named Jerry Rig Everything, he does have the tools to test out if the glass is sapphire crystal and unfortunately it's not because it scratches at level six and with deeper grooves at level seven sapphire is a hard crystal which means it should it should scratch at a level nine but if you're getting scratched at level six with deeper grooves at level seven it is not sapphire so i really suggest you guys be very careful of putting your phone down especially with the lens you don't get the lens scratched other this is the this is the important thing right here taking pictures um i should just put it in the case make sure the case also protects the lens like make sure it doesn't the case has a little bump to it um i have the auto box commuter case and it does it does um you know have the bumps protected um other than that guys that's it for design let's move on to the next segment by the way when you turn the iphone there's a new little sound like that let's move on all right, the iPhone 14 Pro has a new redesigned display and display technologies in it. So starting off first, it is the same 6.1 inch display, all screen OLED display. Um, you know, same thing with, again, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro. Same 6.1 inch all screen OLED. Now, one of the most improved differences between the screen is the nits. The iPhone 14 Pro screen is, um, has 1000 nit brightness, the typical, right? So the screen is bright at a thousand nits. Now, when you hit outside, 
The maximum peak brightness for this display in the iPhone 14 Pro is 2000 nits. That is bright. So which means if you're outside on a sunny day, you will have no problems. Um, you will have no problems in looking at the display because it is really, really bright. You see, I've still got the same resolution, which is a 256, 2556 by 1179 with a pixel resolution at 460 ppi. Of course, if you have the 14 Pro Max, it will be a little bit higher than that, as this is just a Pro model. Um, you know, it's got your HDR display, true tone, you still got your white color P3, haptic touch. That's a feature never going away soon. We have a two million to one contact ratio. Um, now, let's talk about the two main additions to the screen on the iPhone 14 Pro. One is the always on display. That's the always on display. As the name suggests, the screen just stays on. Now, I turn off the flash. Now it's the screen, it looks it looks like it's on normally, right? But trust me, um, it seems the camera looks a little bit different. But trust me, the phone is it's really dimmed. It's really low right now. Now look, that's the screen on. Screen off. You can see your notifications. It goes into this little dark mode banner. Um, the time. You can still see the time. The picture. It dims. Now, Android had this feature for a while now. You know, Apple is now bringing it to the iPhone series. Well, 14 series, well, Pro series, my fault. Um, just Apple made it a little bit more better because of its, um, I forgot what the screen is called. I think it's called a, a LTPO. It's basically the same screen as what the Apple Watch series or since the series five dropped. Um, these share the same screen types, which is a LTPO, I believe it's called. It's just, it's basically a low powered um, screen that, you know, it, it doesn't drain the battery. It keeps it really low and refresh rate um, to one Hertz, which means it just show important things. It won't update as frequently um, as regular screen does or when it's on. Um, so you have the low, this is always on. Um, the lower, the lower the brightness is on the screen of the area because you have the ambient light sensor which is underneath the screen this year. Um, depending on the room condition, if the room is dark, the screen dims more darker. I'm not always on display, it dims a little bit more darker. If it's bright, like right now in this room, the screen will stay on. It's still dimmed, but you'll still be able to see it. Now, if you happen to put the phone in the pocket, in your pocket, the screen turns off fully as it's always on display isn't needed in your pocket that's one way apple um it made it much more better i know when i had that galaxy s8 um the always on display i put it in my pocket or i even blocked the emulate light sensor and it still this still stays on the screen stays on and you know you have you happen to press inputs on the screen and you know apple i tried it you put it in your pocket the screen turns off um, I even did a emulate sensor. I put my pillow over the light sensor and the screen turns off fully. So that's one thing. Um, also, if you have an Apple Watch and if your phone, the iPhone 14 Pro and the Apple Watch works hand to hand together. Um, so if you are happen to be in the same room with your Apple Watch, with the um, always on display, I believe they said that once you leave the room, once you leave the room with your Apple Watch on your wrist and the iPhone 14 in the other room, once you leave the room, once it see it detects that they're not that close together, the always on display will turn off fully. So that's one way to save on battery life as well. So Apple just made the I always on display much more better. You know, you still can see your, your background picture and things like that. With Android, you know, it was just a plain dark screen, um, you know. I'm gonna put the flash on. Let's see if it gets, you can see right now because of the light of my, from the flash, you can see the screen got a little bit more, the always on display got a little bit brighter. Um, it's still dim, 
Um, it came a little bit brighter. I'm gonna turn the flash now for you guys to see again. Oops. All right. So it's still okay. It's kind of dimming down now. Um, but yeah, you can see right there. You see it, it just dimmed. So you can see, depending on the light situation, you know, if let's see if I put my hands. It usually works with a pillow and stuff like that. Um, okay, no, let's see. Yeah, I can touch input on my hands. Um, I'm gonna lower the brightness as well, and you show you guys how it looks as well. It, it, you can see it now. It's really dark. The brightness is low. It's on the lowest setting. The brightness on the lowest setting is right now. You can see with it off locked. You see how thin that is. You can still see what's on the screen display. Um, the camera, like it's the camera picks up light, so it looks like the screen is bright, it's bright, like a little bit bright than before, but it's not. Like in person, the screen is really dim right now. I'm gonna pull on the flash to see how it looks. Um, okay, so let's just, so let's see. The screen is on right now. You guys can't see a thing. Uh, I'm gonna lock it. Wow, so we really can't see anything with the flash on. Um, so I'm gonna put the brightness back how it is. Oops. There we go. Put it back. Boom. Put the flash on. Boom. All right. There we go. Um, so that's the always on display. Now iPhone 13 users had this feature for, for a year now and that is the ProMotion display. ProMotion display is basically Apple's um, 120 hertz display, but it's very dynamic and adaptive. What that means is, sure, the screen is running at a, one, a full 120 hertz, but only when you, you need it to. So for example, if the screen is dim, like if the screen is nothing, you're not doing anything on the screen, this is one hertz, it's using one hertz, you swipe, 120 hertz so anytime you swipe it goes to 120 hertz and drops back down to one if you're watching a show you're watching a movie it needs to be in 120 hertz it will display it if not drop it you're playing a game 420 hertz you're scrolling on facebook or something like that 20 hertz drop back down to one as soon as you let your finger off the screen or for example you're scrolling and you know you stop it stops one hertz now the reason why apple made like that is because well High refresh rate displays drains the battery. And Apple, again, made it much more better. Came with the 13 Pro model, so 13 Pro, relax, you have this feature already. Um, so when the phone, is no no inputs be on the, on the touch on the screen, it's at one hertz, which saves battery life amazingly well. So instead of most Android phones, it always keeps the display at 120 hertz even if you're just looking at it like i do not need to, i do not need the screen to be on 120 hertz all the time draining the battery but with iphones what it sees that you're not doing anything the screen will drop down to a one simple one hertz because you're not doing anything on the screen so boom that's your refresh rate for iphone 13 pro users and 14 pro users now Here's the big change, and we're talking the dynamic island. Let's just get a little zoom on that dynamic island right there. This is this is Apple's pill, pill-shaped cutout. Now, they just named it the dynamic island. There's so many nicknames to this thing right here. Um, many people call it the smart notch. <laughs> Um, but this is Apple's dynamic island, and it's really, well, it's innovative. You can give a tell at that. Um, you know, once you get used to it, you know, you just, it's pretty much like the notch. You know, when the notch first came out, the big notch, people didn't like the notch because, you know, it just, it, it's a big bezel. With this, once you get used to it, it's just there. Um, now, let's turn the display. Matter of fact, not even turn the display. Let's um, yeah, let's the phone. All right, so let's go into something that's dark. Um, okay, so Apple Watch. Okay, so 
you guys can see it. Focus. Now, the rumors were true about the, the little pill and eye cutout. You can see here, that's exactly what this is. It's just a cutout for this for the face ID sensors, and you have your, your cutout for the 12 megapixel true depth camera. Now, Apple, I think it would have been good if it was if we could stay like that, but instead, Apple opt out for this full cutout right here on the notch. Now, the Apple is using hardware and software to fill in that gap. So right here is the software that's filling in the gap, and with also software features at the memory island, which makes this really interactive. So you can see here, just by tapping on it, you can feel some haptics to it. Um, so things like, let's say, I wanna, so let's say I wanna go on the clock, and I set a timer for 16 minutes. You know, you swipe up and it goes into that dynamic island and you can see how fluid it is. The animations is very fluid and clear. You can see that again. See how clear that was. Um, and you can interact with it. So if you tap it, it returns back to the app. You hold down and you can interact with the timer. So I can pause it. Oops, so press the wrong side. Yeah, you can pause it, you can even cancel it, simple. Um, this works also for voice notes and the music app. So let's say I wanna play some Chance the Rapper. Let's play, yeah, let's go with this one. Let's play Handsome, right? So I'm playing Handsome right now. I wanna go to another app, swipe up. Let's put it down for you guys. Do a little glare from the lens. Um, so yeah, playing handsome, I swipe up. It now goes into that dynamic island up there. You can see the music is playing, you pull it down, you can interact with the item right there. Now let's say you have two things running. Let's say you have a timer and you have music playing. Same thing as before, you swipe up have two options now it's like it's like a little multitasking dot right here and you can switch between music and the timer so you hold on the music you got your music controls there you can switch the timer just by pressing it hold it down same thing as well you can see so i'm to show you guys up close you can see that whole up area is software you can see it's true dark with the oil display, and you can still see the cut of the notch and everything right there. Right? So that's just a dynamic island. Um, when you turn the ringer off and on, oops, you can see it's a sound mode right there. Ring. Let me just cancel this timer. Um, if you happen to connect AirPods or you connect the charger to it, we will say charging. Um, I will, I think I still have a screenshot of me doing that, I will put it up on the screen for you guys. If I don't have it, sorry, then you have to do it. But um, AirPods, you got your AirPod Pros. Um, you know, is this up? Yeah, there we go. So here's my AirPod Pros. If you take them out and you put them in your ears, the dynamic island will show that's connected right there. And if you hold it down, it tells you connected to AirPods Pros with the battery life right there, which is pretty neat in a small little dynamic island box. Um, same thing with phone calls. If you make a call, um, let's call Nintendo. Yeah, um, let's, call it, let's call Nintendo. And you swipe up, it goes into the dynamic island. You can see right that. Let's you know how long we're calling for and if there's any activity during the call. Tap it, goes back to home. Yeah, guys, so I kind of forgot to show you guys what it looks like when someone is calling me with the screen on the dynamic island. So when you receive a phone call, it will dynamic island will show you will display the person's picture on the left with the call and end call buttons on the right. And if you answer or not answer them, but if you minimize the call, like you swipe up on the dynamic island. It goes in this really small pill-shaped notification that they're still calling you and you can either press it to answer
answer the call or press and hold to get the options again. So Dynamic Island, many other apps uses it. Just need, they need to update their apps to allow to use the Dynamic Island. Um, there's even a game called Dynamic Hit the Island, which is basically a block breaker game where you just hit the ball into the Dynamic Island area of the screen. Um, it's pretty fun. I, I played it already. Um, basic block block breaker game. Nothing, nothing too much. Um, and that's pretty much it with the Dynamic Island. Really, um, I do know if you have, let's say, you set a timer and you're in you're watching a movie or you're just watching this video and the screen is dark or something like that so let's see right now in the apple watch ui i'm not sure you guys can see it though let me just turn it to flash but you can see up there you guys can see better you can see the little outline of um the dynamic island right here of the timer going on um you can also resize the dynamic island if you take your finger and slide it. Oops, if you slide it, you can shrink the dynamic island to show more, let's say, your Wi Fi signal. And if you slide it back out again, oops, you can show more detail of the dynamic island. So, for example, the timer. So, boom, hides the timer, slide it. Oops, okay, what's going on? It just, it just worked. Seems like a little. Okay, there we go. Boom. And then pull it down, cancel it. All right, so that's the iPhone 14 dynamic gimmick or well, innovative. It's pretty great. I'm um, sure you're watching full screen videos. This thing is going to go in the way. Apple, what Apple should have done it was um, they should have, at least when watching full screen videos, is um, remove that little space and just have the, the pill and eye cut out so you know it will be full screen videos instead of this little black thing blocking the video um, but other than that still great you know innovative step by step who knows maybe in an iPhone 20 Pro you might get a notch um, another thing with the display as well the true depth camera is now you can use face ID in any angle instead of just having it here and unlocking the phone. This thing's blocking it. You can now hold it on the side and you can unlock your face with the phone. As you can see there, let's do it again. So you can see that I just unlocked my phone. I see you do it upside down. I doubt it. I don't think you can. Let's see. Nope, you can't do it. Let's do the other side. Yep, that worked. So you can't do it upside down, but you can unlock it upright and on the sides. Now, one thing I wish they brought back was the landscape mode, like on iPhone Plus series where you hold the phone's landscape, the whole screen comes landscape, like the iPad. They removed that with the iPhone with the notches and face ID. Anyways, guys, this is a pretty long segment I'm um, talking about the dynamic island and uh, screen features of the iPhone 14 Pro. Let's move on to the next segment. All right, performance. The new iPhone 14 Pro series features the brand new Apple A16 Bionic chipset. Unfortunately, if you're opting to buy an iPhone 14, you won't be you won't be getting the new A16 Bionic chip. Instead, you will get last year's chip from the 13, the A15. So, the difference between the A15 to 16 chip Bionic is obviously faster. It's way faster, better better performance, better energy efficiency, higher um, benchmark scores, and everything. This chip is really fast. Again, way ahead of the competition. Um, again, to be honest, in my opinion, Apple does not need to be updating the chips in a yearly basis, just like that. Um, sure, only in, the, in its Pro models, yes, but you can see with the iPhone 14, they didn't upgrade the chip. Instead, they kept it as the A13, which I think is great because now it's a difference between the regular and the Pro model. You know, usually Apple always made the regular and the Pro models the same um, chip and everything like that, but now this year is different. So you really have to get the pro. So anyways, um, 
it's we still got all oh, it's built on a four nanometer process we have 16 million transistors uh, operations you know fast operations still got a 16 core neural engine and stuff like that um it's still a six core cpu but this time our two high performance cores are clocked at a 3.4 gigahertz oops that's a lot a 3.4 gigahertz is close they could have made it into a 3.5 but it is a 3.4 gigahertz um so now don't don't think that it's always going to be always clocked at that clock speed no only when it needs to it will go up to 3.4 gigahertz um but that's the first time ever on a mobile device you know my m1 macbook pro um clock speeds it goes up to 3.2 gigahertz but that's an eight core this is a six core um, however it's four power efficiency cores stays clocked at a 2.02 gigahertz um you know it's power efficiency doesn't need to be clocked at that high so that's fine with me um, we have our new Apple GPU, same five core. Apple doesn't really give that much information about its GPU. Just know it's just 20% faster than its previous generation as always. So comparing this to the iPhone 12 Pro, it's about 40% faster than that phone. Um, you know, this is a brand new chip. It's gonna last for a while, plays the latest games, no hiccups and anything like that. Um, we still got our, we still have six gigs of RAM. Um, I believe it's it is what DDR4 still. Yeah, it was still, st still like a low um, LP DDR4. I believe it, it is. Um, I'm not too sure on that. They didn't really Apple really doesn't really talk about its RAM like that as well. But you know, it's still six gigs. Um, I don't think we need any more than six gigs for now. You know, we're not really doing anything much more on the iPhone compared to its iPad and MacBook series and stuff like that. Um, another thing I forgot to mention in my iPhone 12 video is um, the iPhone, I believe from the iPhone 11 series to now to the 14 series, features a, a ultra band chip, which is called um, the, U, the U1 chip, which, which basically what it does is it brings accurate compass and also if you point at a device with a ultra band chip the phone recognizes it and it will have connectivity to that um the iphone 11 was the first iphone that featured that you that you one chip um if you have a home pod you will find it useful which i will be doing a review on pretty soon and let's say you want to airdrop to a phone this is the iphone 12 right here 13 pro i want to airdrop I want to airdrop something to this phone only. I don't want to airdrop to them or stuff like that. Sure, you can just open. Um, sure, you can just open and just choose which device that you want to airdrop it to. But um, <clears throat> with phones with the U1 chip, you can just press airdrop, and what you can do is you point your phone, this phone, to someone, the phone right here, and the U1 chip will recognize it as another U1 device and it will beam it to that device. Um, so yeah, I forgot to mention that to you guys that this, that the iPhone 12 or 11 and up features the U1 chip, which is really great. Um, it's also possible to find your, your, your AirPods. Um, with the U1 chip, you can accur accurately find your, 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 your AirPods accurately. Sitting with, Wait, my fault. Same thing with the um. Wait, I don't think you can do it with AirPods just yet. I think the newer ones you can. Not the older, not the first gen AirPod Pros. But I do some research on that. But I do know the AirTags because the AirTags have a U1 chip in it. You can also accurately find the, home, the AirTags there. So that's pretty much with performance of the A16 Bionic. There's not much really to say about it. It's, it's just it's a new chip. Benchmarks are really out of this world. Um, it's really, really surpassed the competition, and this ship is gonna last for a while. Um, it has a new display, I think it's called a display and controller, which controls the fluency of the um, of 
the dynamic island and cinematic more in pro res but that's gonna be the next segment so that's it with display and let's move on battery life on the iphone 14 pro series it's pretty amazing as a video clip of 23 hours that's pretty long compared to the iphone 12 series which i had before um video playback stream is 20 hours audio playback is a whopping 40 i mean i'm off for 75 hours um same mag safe up to 18 watts um, fast charge you know up to, up to 20 watts same thing as before with the models and stuff like that same same battery nothing really much to talk about it, it, the battery is larger in the 14 and because of the 816 bionic it is more optimizing power saving again apple really doesn't um, talk about its battery and what capacity it uses but rumors rumors state that it is using a 3200 um, milliamp capacity battery just so that's that's rumors we don't know if it's true unless they open it up yet but they, they did say that apple is using a um a 3200 milliamp battery so well, that's pretty much here with the battery let's move on to the next segment camera now if you guys watch the apple keynote apple spent a while just explaining the different camera upgrades we got with the iphone 14 pro now the apple 14 apple iphone 14 pro got a massive huge camera upgrade and not just internal but externally as well as look at that camera bump it is really really big um you cannot use iphone 13 pro cases with the 14 pro because the camera bump is really much more bigger compared to last year's iphone um and the lens do protrude out more um thank god for this case because if you do lay this iphone flat you will scratch up those lenses apple claims it is sapphire crystal but you can't really count on it and be reliable of it too much because your lens will get scratched even if you put it if you lay the iphone flat on the screen on the table or something like that it 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 goes like like this in an angle it's not really flat because of those lens this out box case that i bought it does help protect the case as it is a little case bump right there to help to help not the protruding lens touch the surface and scratch it up you can see here just by putting it down you can see it slides around the place now i'm not going to really do it like that because you know again i can't really count on something you know even though it's protecting the lens still i really don't want to risk scratching these camera lens because once these lens are scratched you know you're going to have to go to apple and they, they'll charge you an insane amount of money just to fix these lens um, I already had a situation where my iPhone 12 Pro lens cracked. Um, I got that fixed. Um, so you don't want that to happen to your 14 Pro. Um, so, you know, we got a huge camera upgrade. I'm gonna talk about it now in the video. So, um, this lens is really, really great. So, so iPhone 14 Pro. So right here, our 12, we found that muffle in our main sensor, our wide camera had made a big jump from 12 megapixels to a 48 megapixel camera. Now I know Samsung phone, I, Samsung phones does feature a 108 megapixel sensor, but it's not always about megapixels, it's always about software rendering and stuff like that and how, how good the camera is. There's other, there's many camera phone cameras that have high resolutions, megapixel count as the iPhone 14 does, but it takes horrible pictures. So it's not always megapixel count that makes the picture more clearer. Just know that. Then right here we have our same 12 megapixel telephoto camera, which did get an improvement. Um, I will talk to that more in a minute. And we have our 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, which also got upgraded. Um, we have our mic, we have our LiDAR scanner, there's no updates here, same LiDAR scanner. 
Um, it's even the same size, just a little more spaced out because the bump is bigger. We have our new flag and the pattern on the flag is a little bit different. You can see right there. Let's turn on the light so you guys can see it. You can see the flash does look a little bit different there on this model compared to other flash and other older iPhones. It wasn't like that. Come on to the front, we have our 12 megapixel true depth camera. Um, this also got upgraded and now features autofocus, which is a really neat feature. Um, so let's talk about these camera lens and give a full spec layout of these camera lenses right now. All right, so I didn't really take pictures yet, but I will be taking pictures when I head back out to work. I'll be taking pictures and show you guys how everything works. So first things first, we have a 48 megapixel main wide camera with 24 mm with an aperture of f 1.78, a second generation censorship, optical image stabilization, 7 element lens, and 100% focus pixels. Um, so sure it is a 48 megapixel main camera but it will still shoot pictures in 12 megapixels now that 12 megapixel cameras from the 14 pro will look much more sharper to compare to iphone 13 pro and iphone 12 pro now the reason why is this because it's using pixel binding which uses four pixels instead of one so instead of using a full 48 megapixel it would downgrade it and make it come up to a 12 megapixel camera to picture my folds and it will look sharp as a 48 megapixel camera now you do have the option to shoot in raw 48 megapixel if you turn on the apple pro raw settings in your camera lens um doing this just know by doing this you will lose a lot of space because each 48 megapixel camera picture that you take it is approximately 75 megabyte megabytes per file so just know that um we have our 12 megapixel ultra wide 13 mm with an aperture of f 2.2 and a 120 degree field of view this one features a six element lens and 100 percent focus pixels on the other one we have a 12 megapixel 2x and 3x telephoto now we're going to talk about the 2x telephoto this is a brand new option in the camera app um, now this one is, is enabled by quad pixel sensor, which again, it takes the 48 megapixel wide camera and put it down to a 12 megapixel, which makes it sharp and zoom level. So it is the same 48 mm with an aperture of 1.78, second generation censorship, sensor shift, optical image stabilization, seven element lens and 100% focus pixel. So if you're taking pictures using the 2x option um you're using basically the 48 megapixel main camera lens now to the 3x telephoto it is a 7 mm 2.8 aperture optical image stimulation six element lens we have 3x optical zoom in 2x optical zoom out 6x optical zoom range and digital zoom up to 15x pretty night neat um, has a type of true tone flash which is the flash behind still has deep fusion hdr portrait mode night mode night mode is really improved in the iphone 14 series and we have our new photonic engine um, we have our micro photography um, and pretty much everything else pretty much the same thing as the iphone 13 series so for the photonic engine which i'm going to explain right now right so apple's photonic engine in the iphone 14 series is basically a next generation of deep fusion which um deep fusion is a technique which the iphone camera takes multiple shots using different settings um and then it uses apple's machine learning from the a16 or the apple a a series chips processing power and the neural engine to merge these images and take the best of each shot um so with the photonic engine on iphone 14 and newer models the phone will start taking more uncompressed images early in the process of taking the shot and it will reproduce more detail retain textures 
improve exposures and make colors more vibrant in lower light environments so that's the new photonic engine it's basically you know um a better deep fusion from iphones they use from iphone using iphone 11 up um again i will be taking pictures and showing you guys how everything works um so that's pretty much it with those cameras let's move on to some video um it still shoots in 4k 60 fps um now we got a cinematic mode which shoots up to 4k 30 fps can't wait to use that um we have a new action mode which basically um it's a very a very sturdy stabilization which means you can be running you can be driving by and the camera won't shake or move but unfortunately this only records up to 2.8k at 60 fps um, we still have our Dolby Vision HDR10 recording, um, HDR video, ProRes. We have a ProRes video. Um, you can shoot up to 4K 30fps with ProRes. But if you have a the iPhone 14 Pro and its base storage, which is 128 gigs, you're going to shoot ProRes video at 1080p at 30fps. The reason for it is because it ProRes is a high resolution file. It's using all of 48 megapixels. That's why it's gonna take long. Um, again, we have our second generation sensor shift for the video. Um, we got audio zoom, stereo recording, um, and everything else from previous iPhones. Now, moving on to that true depth camera. True depth camera. In the front is the same 12 megapixel front camera now with autofocus we got a aperture of 1.9 autofocus with focus pixels a six element lens retina flash the new photonic engine deep fusion hdr4 and so on and so on stay records 4k at 60 fps cinematic 4k 30 Pretty great improvements um, I don't have any pictures I will take pictures and show you guys and also videos of the front camera all right guys so right here is a shot from the wide camera of the iPhone 14 Pro and here's zoomed up you can see it loses it barely loses quality and it's still sharp here's a, here's a view side by side really nice quality camera pictures um, here's another shot in daytime with the lights my feet you can see the details and of this Nissan wheel now remember the iPhone 14 Pro is a 40 megapixel camera but just remember that when you do take shots with the camera it is going to be a 12 megapixel shot and this is due due to pixel binding where the camera it uses one pixel and it uses four instead of one now it's not it doesn't mean because because it's 12 megapixels it doesn't mean that the quality will be degraded or anything but it will be more sharper because from a 40 megapixel sensor to a 12 megapixel sensor it retains all the details colors lighting compressed into a 12 megapixel file and it really it's really clear when you zoom in you don't you barely see any quality lost so just remember that whenever you take a 40 megapixel shot it will be a 12 megapixel shot instead. If you do want it to be a 48 megapixel shot, you can turn on the Apple Pro Raw settings in your, in your phone settings, and you can take the Apple Pro Raw shot. Just remember that if you're not in correct lighting, the Pro Raw file will still be a 12 megapixel file. All right, so this is the micro photography on the iPhone 14 Pro. Um, it is a big improvement from the iPhone 13 Pro um, I personally didn't have an iPhone 13 Pro, but I've seen it in person and I actually tested it before and from the iPhone 14 Pro, the micro photography, it's really a big improvement on the iPhone 14 Pro series. Um, this is due to, due to the fact that the lens are a little more bigger on the iPhone 14, which means a little bit more light for the lens. Um, the aperture is a little bit more higher than last year's iPhone 13 Pro allowing you to take really detailed shot micro photography you can hold the iPhone up to two centimeters of the object or subject and it will take the micro photography now the iPhone 14 Pro 
you um, you can go into settings. If you don't want it to automatically switch it to micro photography, you can do, you can do head to the settings and get changed the option there. Um, however, if you do default to leaving it to auto switch, the phone will automatically detect if you're up close to something and it will automatically switch into micro photography. So you can see here in this picture, it's very detailed with the Nissan with the wheel and everything. You can see every texture in the wheel. Here's another shot in macro photography. You can see I was really up close into these these tr these leaves on the tree. They look like, like mini pines. You can see it's very detailed, vibrant on the 14 Pro. Um, unfortunately, if I had a 13 Pro, I would compare the macro, but unfortunately I don't. Just gotta go through with my word that the micro photography on the iPhone 14 Pro series is amazing. So this is using the telephoto lens on the iPhone 14 Pro. As you guys already know, the iPhone 14 Pro comes with four zoom levels now, optical zooms. We have your 0.5, which is the ultra wide. You have your 1X using the 48 megapixel main lens. You have your 2X, which is a cropped 12 megapixel from the 48 megapixel camera lens. And you have your 3X telephoto. This photo right here is from the 3X telephoto lens. You can see it's very clear and vibrant. Again, once it's in correct lighting, the camera will work with you and the content will look amazing. Now, you can see 3X optical zoom. There's no quality loss in the picture. However, if you do surpass 3X optical zoom, you are headed into digital zoom, which you will see a little downgrade in quality and a little bit more of noise and grainy effects on the photos. Here we got night mode photography. If you guys have known already, night mode photography was introduced on the iPhone 11 series. iPhone 14 Pro is just really makes it way more better. You can see in, in these three pictures that I'm displaying on the screen, these areas of the of the er, these areas of the place were very dark, and night mode just really just made it look like there's light in this room. Now believe me, I'm telling you guys the truth. This is no editing or anything. I did not edit these photos. The, these pictures that I took were in complete dark rooms and night mode just really made them look like it was light in the room. Um, thanks to that LiDAR scanner, it is more and, and improved. And with the new larger sensor, it is greater and improved as well. So this picture right here is, was taken with Apple's Pro Raw with, in full 48 megapixels now like i said if you do have it enabled in your camera app you can take full effect of the full 48 megapixel camera now doing this you will get the full quality of the picture every detail of the 48 megapixel camera um, this doesn't mean that when you take it it will convert it to a 12 megapixel but it will be a full raw 48 megapixel picture now however doing this just know that the file size for these images are pretty high. Um, in the settings, Apple did say it, it's up to 75 megabyte, but this photo that I took right here was about 90.8 megabytes. So that's pretty big for a picture. Um, another thing is about it, you have to be in perfect lighting. Um, if It's not gonna turn the screen about, um, about lighting but if it's not in good lighting it will just take a regular 12 megapixel raw picture so you have to be in good lighting for, to take full effect of the 40 megapixel camera lens so again these iphones are capable of recording up to 4k 60 fps i like to record in 4k 30 as that's the sweet spot um unfortunately i didn't record any action mode shots so i will do that in a separate video if i have a chance so right here we got cinematic mode with cinematic mode it basically blurs out the background and focuses on the subject or the or object that you're focusing on so you can see here i'm focusing on the wheel and the mirror side mirror and the background is blurry you can do this up to 4k 30 fps the 12 megapixels of true depth camera now has a bigger camera lens, a bigger aperture, and now includes out of focus. So pictures and using the front cam will be dramatically improved, as you can see in these two shots. Front camera can again record up to 4K 60 FPS.
30 FPS is the sweet spot again to me. All right, so man, that was a long segment. So um, that's the camera department of the iPhone 14 Pro series. Um, let's move on to the next segment as this video is pretty, it's gonna be a pretty long video. Well, the latest iPhone, what you can use it for, again, many things, but it's a newer iPhone. You're in the market for a new phone. What do you do? You buy the latest model. Um, it doesn't get any cheaper than this. It is retails at about a thousand dollars. You know, you won't get this cheap anytime soon. So you know, if you're buying, buying, if you're in the market for a new phone, just go for the iPhone. This is just used for phone calling, music playback, you know, all that kind of stuff. Only one package and it will last for a while because of the A16 Bionic chip. Now, it's not like, it's not really purpose of me explaining because it's, this is not old. This is the latest, this is the latest piece of technology we have in our hands. Now, if I was to bring out an iPhone 3GS, now I'll explain why would you use that. But this iPhone 14 Pro, it's new. It's nothing really to explain about it. Other than, you know, if you have an Android as a daily driver, and you want to use this iPhone because you know iPhone cameras are really great. You can use this iPhone as a secondary camera, um, or I don't know if. Oops, I won't recommend just using this phone as a music player because um, you can do it with any device on any cheaper iPhone. Um, so if you if you have an Android as a main device and you want to take great pictures or use a dedicated camera system, sure, go for the iPhone 14 Pro. Other than that, guys, let's move on to the next segment. Like I said in the last segment, the, the approximate value for this iPhone 14 is $999, the same price as the iPhone 10 came out a few years ago. There were rumors saying that this iPhone will get a price increase, but in the US it didn't. But in other overseas, it did get that price increase. You won't find it any cheaper than this, so just go with the $999. In my opinion, the iPhone 14 Pro is very a significant upgrade to the iPhone with the on-screen design. Since the iPhone 10, we've been always been getting the same notch design of the iPhone. The iPhone 14 Pro changed that with this new dynamic island cutout. Um, if you all come from iPhone 11 or well, 12 Pro and below, this is a really big significant upgrade for you as the cameras did get a little bump up. You got your promotion display but the main features of this iphone 14 is the cameras and the dynamic island these are two big upgrades to the iphone series and you should definitely pick it up in my opinion so far it is a great phone cameras are very amazing always using the um, 12 megapixels going to a 48 massive jump it is very worth picking up the iphone 14 pro in my opinion Dynamic Island is cool to try it out. It's really nice phone to pick up. All right, guys. So that's it for today's video. Once again, if you like this video, please leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. As subscribers do help to support this channel grow, and it means a lot to me and your other family members. Other than that, guys, thanks again for watching this week's video. See you guys in the next video. Bye for now, guys.